Hello and welcome to the Van Gogh Starry Night. Yes, our inspiration, and I suggest you look at it too, is the real Van Gogh Starry Night. Vincent Van Gogh from the 1800s Impressionism period. And if you can look at the real Van Gogh and learn techniques from him, that's what we're going to be doing in class. If you have me, your canvas is gonna be smaller if you, I'm your teacher. So you're gonna get a thick brush and a thin brush for staying in the lines. Or if you have me for upper school, you could get the Chinese landscape brush that gets skinny on the end and thicker. We're gonna go, you don't need as much paint as me if your canvas is smaller. We're gonna use the primary colors and get the secondary colors. Now I like, we already did my class, we started with the, where the moon and the stars are and laid out the plan, looking at and drawing wiggly lines, some of the elements of art, principles of design. I did in the foreground some surfers for personal expression, where you get to tell about yourself and things you like in your art, and someone's hiking in the cliff here. And for me, that reminds me about the headlands. All right, I'm gonna look at it, and I have one I've made with more blues and purples, and you can add your personal expression and change it. And I'm mixing red and blue to get, you guys tell me what shade and tint am I gonna get? Ooh. A lovely shade of purple and you get to use all your favorite colors in the sky I'm gonna go right over my bush and I'm gonna start looking at the way the direction goes and keeping thick unblended colors in the sky called impressionism and I'm gonna with this gallery wrap canvas go right off the edges so that way the wall can frame it and I'm gonna keep thicking in big blobby layers of paint you're gonna be working on a table so you don't have to worry about drips so what we're gonna do is next to one another, keep going back and forth, looking at the real Van Gogh. Oh, I see he has more white in with some of his blue. So I'm dabbing and dipping, getting a nice thick layer, and I'm looking at where it's white and where the curve is, and I'm going around it. Now I'm not spending a lot of time mixing it up like soup, and that's all a part of impressionism, to have these lovely swirls of different shades of color. And by getting shades and tones of color, your art should look a little bit more dimensional and 3D. I'm gonna end with laying it flat and getting a big, big blob like that and having my acrylic look a little more dimensional by adding some thick raised areas like Van Gogh, not blending it, not going like this and blending and feathering like we've done with other ones, but keeping thick unblended areas where you could see the brush stroke. And that, my friends, is called Impressionism. Now you can notice right here on the hill, he has more white. So I'm adding a little more white with my blue for the hill. And I'm gonna start and going from lightest to oldest. <laughs> lightest to oldest, ah, lightest to darkest. Doesn't matter if you're old or young, whatever age you are. Okay, now notice his brush strokes go downward as if the wind is blowing down. And when we lived at Golden Gate Seminary, right across from the Golden Gate Bridge, in California, there was all this lovely mist like that where you could see it, where you could see the mist. And so that's why he has, I'm thinking, some lines that go like that so you could show the wind and the mist. And when you get to the tops of your mountains, it's okay to cover them because that's why we're doing the background first on this lesson. Then you guys can finish up just by looking at them because the foreground's going to be a little easier. Don't forget, if you changed it and did water like me, your sky is always reflected in the water so you want to come down and do a couple of the waves and have a little wave and some water here if you go right over your wiggly bush it's okay we're going to get the black and end uh it can even be next class if you run out of time because art is a process on adding that black swiggly bush that kind of reminds me of a dr seuss bush what he's famous for impressionism afterwards all right so i'm going to try to get a little bit quicker done because not only am I doing this on my lunch break, but I actually have all of seventh grade coming next period. Yay, seventh graders. Because you will be following along with me with this lesson and making your own Van Gogh Starry Nights. So I'm starting here. You see all that white at the mist? Going across my mountains so I know where the horizon line is, is by the mountains here. Now I'm keeping these unblended brush strokes. See how fast I'm laying it down like that? To leave those strokes, those lines, or what Van Gogh left, okay? Unblended strokes, which is called Impressionism. He left an impression, ooh. Thus the term Impressionism, and we started with Monet, the study of. Now we're ending our Impressionism study, uh, unit of study with Vincent Van Gogh. And I actually have a student named Vincent. Hey Vincent, because I know you're watching this video with me in class, and you're gonna do a Van Gogh as well. And he allows me to call him Vincent Van Gogh 
because his name's Winston. Ah, uh, get it? Okay. All right, so I'm getting really fast here. Now, I want to do teach you that you can still use water. There are different techniques to use, and if you want to, you like the tint you got in the tone, you want to quickly cover your paper, or in this case, canvas, you can use water and spread it. And I'm going to go right through my bush to show you if I use water with acrylic, you can still do this do the see-through look and still see all of your what? Your work you've done underneath where you laid out your plans and you spent that time sketching and using a Sharpie then to go over your pencil sketch to lay out your plans. All right, so I wanna show you two techniques to use with the acrylic paints. Now I'm gonna keep going. This um, Van Gogh replica, I'm looking at the Van Gogh. Remember, I want you to keep looking at the Van Gogh. And the state standard we're hitting here is to learn techniques and processes from various artists. And obviously the artists we are learning from here, and you notice the different tints and tones I'm getting by mixing a little more red, going a little darker, right? And all we need are the primary colors and I'm gonna teach you how to mix and get different tones and tints for the secondaries. All right, so in other words, you wanna learn from the processes of the world's most famous artists is what we're learning from with Van Gogh, looking at his work and then emulating it copying what you see and he's got a lot of these what I keep dunking in and putting another stroke if I did that stroke I keep dunking in and I do a stroke next to that I dunk into my my paint stroke okay dunk into another tint or shade stroke and that's all it is because some of you guys are like how do I do this I can't do this Mrs. Smith I want to let you know it's just a, a brush stroke at a time one brush stroke stop Dunk it in your paint, get a nice lovely shade, mix maybe sometimes with white if you see it's lighter, like near the moon. I'm gonna add more white there and I'm gonna go around. And just like you would do with a pencil, you're gonna leave your strokes sometimes. It's not unblended. You don't spend time blending or cross hatching. We're just gonna leave an impression called impressionism. Now I'm going to keep going with my blues. I'm gonna add a little more white with yellow afterwards. But you're kind of going around your bango doing your swirls until you fill in the area. Say it's not filled in, I'm gonna get a thick layer this time. Look at that thick layer of paint with white. Get it really thick on my brush. Look at all that. Now I'm gonna spin my brush, spin, 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 and get that thick layer to make it more dimensional and swirly. Say it dries out, do another dip, dunk, swirl and spin. And I'm gonna keep dunking as I go and use a lot of paint if I want it to be thick and raised like the real Van Gogh and unblended. Now I like that unblended look. I'm not gonna go back and forth and keep blending it. I wanna see the strokes to see the swirls, right? And look at the different tones. I'm gonna add a little more red now and get a little more purple by mixing red and blue. And I'm gonna not do black to last because black, I don't know if you guys notice what happens when you put black on your brush and then use the water. It gets all your water black and muddy looking. So I'm going to wait for last for my black because it's gonna get all my colors darker and muddier looking. So I'm going to wait for that last, okay? So right now we're going around the stars or you can do cover the stars and then go over them la later. Okay, there's two ways of doing it, but I'm just going like this, stroke, 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 stroke in the direction that the starry night is going, in the direction. So you wanna change direction and go back and forth like this. Some of you guys, have that habit of just going back and forth really quickly. Now I'm doing this lovely tones in my sky. What if I can't mix those tones again? I'm gonna reflect those in the water. If you're doing a body of water down here like me, you don't have to, you could stay pure to the true Vincent Van Gogh. But you know I love teaching you guys to use your personal expression, express yourself in art, and maybe one day you're gonna teach others how to express themselves, show their feelings, tell a story in their art. And that, my friends, is called art therapy. When I was a foster parent, ooh, my foster daughter, Sharon Renee, loved art therapy to express herself in art. All right, you can tell your little story with your painting. All right, so I'm just getting some of my watercolors here. Water is the reflection. I'm going right through my surfers. You can dab them up. If you use your finger, I don't suggest it. Sometimes Mrs. Smith's a bad example. Use a paper towel if you go a little darker on where you want to see through to see your um, your lines, your plans, your art. Now I'm not going to finish in this lesson. I'm trying to be short and sweet. See how fast I could work with you guys painting alongside me, watching and joining in, watching where Van Gogh curves his lines. 
seeing how much you can get done with the colors in your palette before we go to squeeze out more. This is a process, and that's why some of my students, friends, you guys know I've given you extra time, right? I've given you extensions on your art because I saw it was coming wonderful and I didn't want to rush a masterpiece, all right? So take your time, do not rush a masterpiece, but keep going with the flow in the shape. You can see I'm looking at the Van Gogh, I'm doing the turns and all the ways the paint is going around the direction his is going. And I'm gonna keep going with this, not all with that same color, with different shades and tones. All right, to end this lesson though, before I go any further, I wanna show you how I'm gonna add a little bit of black, just like you put salt on the slit, uh, on a steak. You put too much, you ruin it. You don't wanna dump the salt in. You don't wanna pull, mix all the black in. You wanna just pull in just a little bit and then mix it in. Ooh, look how it overpowers right away. It gets really dark right away. So if you pull in black, do it very slowly. Right up there, I see a little more dark of a tone where he has a little black with his blue. And I'm gonna keep it unmixed and have a little bit of black so it looks a little more like nighttime. I've done one that I'll show you guys on my online gallery that has no black where I just used uh, the purples a little more and blues and did a lighter sky. So remember, you're the artist. You don't have to go so dark and black if you don't want to add black, but if you do, please be very careful because remember this bush is gonna be black and for it to stand out against the background, you wanna use maybe just a little bit of black to darken your colors. Don't use the pure black. The pure black, the darkest dark, is going to be on that bush. All right, so I'm gonna finish with my darkest tones before I do layering on top. And then I'm gonna finish with another layer of a lighter tone, ooh, by squeezing out some more blue and white. But I'm trying to see the direction, like around there is gonna have a little more white, probably with yellow around the stars. And then we wanna watch the direction the sky is going. And this is how we're gonna keep working. We're gonna keep going. If you wanna have more flow and fluidity in your paint, if it's getting hard to spread, dunk it in water. You can use a little water. Remember, like I showed you down here, and do a more thinner see-through layer with acrylics, or you could use a really thick layer and have it dimensional and 3D like Van Gogh. All right, so with your Van Gogh art to study, I am going to keep going. If you wanna see this finished as a masterpiece, we're going to be spending a little more time in class, spending time looking at the real Van Gogh, making this look a little more realistic. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there. I wanted you guys to know also, hey, I messed up, Mrs. Smith, I need a new canvas. Nope, you don't need a new canvas. You can do what's called go over a mistake. Just like whiteout goes over a mistake, you can go right over your lines in acrylic and cover any mistakes you've done, okay? So you want it whiter there, just go over it. Or you can let it dry if you're getting frustrated. Go back to it another time so that way you have plenty of time to have a fresh perspective, to look at the Van Gogh again and to fix up anything you messed up by doing another layer right on top of it. All right, so I'm gonna probably, I've had time stopping, I'm gonna have to stop, clean my brush if you're going for yellow, clean it, dry it off, dab it on there. If you wanna end with a little bit of yellow and use all the colors in your palette, yellow and red make orange, so I'm gonna end with a little bit of that color on my moon, because I see Van Gogh's is a little darker, and I wanted to cover my, with a thicker layer of my red and yellow, I wanna cover my uh, marker, my Sharpie marker lines on my moon to make it a little more um, realistic. Like a moon, you don't see some black outlines. It just blends in, okay? So we're gonna continue, like I said, with your Van Gogh. I'm now adding yellow to the moon, looking at the Van Gogh. So the moon will stand out. It's a darker pigment from the background. When you have your yellow and white, look around like, ooh, should I work on my star now? Do you want to? When you do, I'll just show you on one star what we'll do when we're done with the background. Ground, we'll go back over your stars if you need it. We'll go around like this. See the way I'm moving my hand and dunking back in the yellow? Then I'm going to have to move around, round, round, and we're going to do that. Just do a little bit of a glow around it. And then stop, right? Because that's the way we want it to do called Impressionism. All right, now I'm gonna have some of those reflected in the water. And over and out from this video lesson, I am going to stop recording. 
and finish this in class with you, my friends. So can't wait to see your Van Gogh. Voila, we will end with looking at the real Vincent Van Gogh, which is I want you to zoom in, focus in, and keep going with his style called Impressionism. Over and out from this art lesson. See you.